Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all. My name is Yvonne Camacho, and I am an elementary instructional coach from the Division of Curriculum and Instruction. I will be going over the basic introduction to our laptops and laptop carts to help us be more aware of the parts of our laptops and laptop carts, as well as how to sanitize and maintain them. So let us begin by getting to know our laptop. It is a Lenovo ThinkPad L13 Yoga. And it comes with a USB-C charger that has a 65 watt and an extension cord. There are four yoga modes for the design features of the Lenovo L13. The first mode is called the notebook mode, which is used like a regular laptop. The second and the third mode are called the tent mode and the stand mode, which is a preference to how you want to display your screen. The fourth mode is called the tablet mode, which is used like a regular tablet. Now, Going on to what your ports are on this laptop, on the left side, you have the power input that uses a USB-C and another one, which is also USB-C, a network extension for the ethernet, a USB 3.1, which is always on, and a headphone, and microphone combo connection. Now on the other side of your laptop, the right side, you have other ports. And one of the ports uh, that you would see is the power button. that has lights to tell you whether or not it's on or off. Uh, if it's white, it's on. And if it is red, or if it is off, you don't see any light, that means it is off. There's also a micro SD card reader and a USB 3.1. Now we also have an HDMI port that you can connect to do presentations on or to show uh, movies on or uh, videos on that deals with your lessons and a Kensington lock slot that you can use if you want to get yourself uh, uh, the slot that locks it so that you can just leave it there and no one's able to, to grab or steal your, your laptop. But we normally don't use that. Now if you open up your laptop and look just above your camera, which is located on the top center of your monitor or your screen, you can see a switch. That switch is like a window that opens and closes your camera. So if you want a little privacy or security, you just touch the switch and slide it to the right. When you slide it to the right, you'll see a red dot. And on that red dot, what that red dot means is basically that it is closed, that nobody can see you. And if you touch that same switch and you slide it to the right, that red dot will also follow. And that is also telling you that people can see you and that you have no longer your, your privacy. Um, so whatever you're doing, uh, make sure that, you know, you're, you know that to look into that camera to check whether or not it's open or closed. Now close up your laptop and flip it upside down. We're going to go over the bottom part of your laptop. Now if you're wondering where your speakers are on, the, on your laptop, it's found here. If you look on the right and you look on the left side, you'll see a little opening vent. And then there's like a metal screen just underneath it. Those are your laptop's speakers. Going on to um, another item that, that you see, uh, there you can see a red 
and silver sticker with bars on it, that is your asset number. That is the number that is given to that equipment or to the computer so that they can identify who that computer is assigned to. So do not remove that. That is very important so that if uh, by any chance uh, you misplace it and somebody in the school found it, then all they need to do is just look at the number and then they will identify that you are the one the computer is assigned to and they will return it to you. Now on the top left side of your bottom part of your laptop, you'll see uh, vents with uh, screens underneath it. That is your air vent for your laptop. That is the area that you need to make sure is not covered or blocked because that can cause your laptop to overheat. Now it's recommended that you don't put it in any towel or blankets or couches or anything like that while it's on because it is almost like a suction where uh, whatever you put on it and you know that that cloth like materials have lint on it so or cotton right so any loose uh, materials will get sucked into that and cause will end up causing uh, it to get clogged and when you clog it most likely you know your laptop will end up overheating and when it does overheat it does have a emergency shut off uh, mode where if it gets to a point your computer will end up having to shut down and won't turn on until it cools off so if you want to prevent that from happening Try to keep uh, or try to make sure that uh, you don't cover uh, your air vent of your computer and have it clogged up with uh, dust, dirt, or even lint, right? Just to be safe. Okay, opening up your computer or your laptop, you'll see the keyboard. And on the keyboard, there's a little red dot. That little rubber red dot is called a track point. That track point is almost like a mouse that is placed directly in the middle of the keyboard so that you can, if you're, you're not wanting to use your, your trackpad, you can just basically use your finger or whatever finger you have free and use it to scroll that little pointer uh, scrolling uh, arrow that, that you would have moving around your screen, that controls that. So if you want to go right, you just uh, press it to the right and your, uh, your pointer arrow will also go right. If you press it to the left, your pointer arrow will also go to the left. And if you want to go around in circles, you just push it around in circles and your pointer scroller will also go in circles. So it's a quick way. It's actually, you know, to your own choice on, and if you like to use this, you know, your preference, if you want to use that particular um, controller for your uh, scrolling and your pointing on your computer. So, it, so that again is a track point. It has uh, three functions, which is it is used as a pointer, a clicker, and a scroller. So if uh, clicker meaning that if you put the arrow onto an app or an item that you want to choose, you just press down and it'll choose it. Okay, next we are gonna go over your mouse or your trackpad. Um, you have on the, the top left with the little 
a red line on it, that is called a left click button. When you press that, it is uh, used to select or open an item. And then if you look on the right side of it, there's also a little red line. That is called a right click button. And that is used to, uh, when you're using it, if you press on it, it is used to open up a menu to your shortcut um, so that if you want to, uh, I guess, uh, open a new file or folder, you just press that and then the, the shortcut uh, menu will pop up and there you go, it, it's for you to see. Now that middle button is connected to the feature of your uh, track point button, that little red button in the middle of your uh, keyboard. So what it does is that when you press that and with your with one of your fingers and you take a, um, your other hand and you move it around up and down, um, this feature has it where um, it'll make you able to, um, if you're surfing the net, uh, go quickly from uh, website to website. Or if you're going through apps, uh, quickly go from one app to another. Or documents like a PowerPoint presentation. You know how when you open up uh, to a slide and uh, you use your your pointer, and you're not pressing the that middle button, it locks you in to only staying in that slide. But if you press that button and you're pressing your track point button that you can go from slide to slide to slide faster. Okay, so it makes it uh, where it connects and then it makes it qu quicker to scroll through um, your documents again, your website and your apps. Next is the bottom part, that bigger rectangle box. That is your trackpad. Almost similar to, to the uh, three buttons on the top, um, like I said, uh, these are features to your preference, what makes you comfortable to use. Um, now on this trackpad, um, you use one finger and you can use it as a scroller. You could go right, you could go left, you could go up, down, circles, you know, whatever direction you want to go, uh, use that. And it's also used to open up items so if you tap it you can have items uh, like your apps opened up or you can select an item highlight it okay next part is um, a corner uh, you see that red box that red box has it where it's an invisible you know but I, I made sure that I put in that red box so that you're aware that um, this is another feature that the trackpad has. That way you can use two fingers to press and that it'll open up the shortcut menu. So when you wanna open it up, there's two ways. The one on the top, that little red but uh, line with a uh, button or the corner. Uh, right bottom of the trackpad. Same features, uh, same thing goes with the left button and the corner of your trackpad, the left side, same feature, select uh, open uh, button. So it really does depend on the user's preference, uh, which is comfortable and easier for them. Um, it's just more of a broad uh, uh, option for, I guess, that, that the laptop gives you. Now going over your mouse pad or your trackpad, this one has it where it has five touch gestures. We will be going over those five touch gestures. The first one is um, the one finger tap. By using your pointer finger, you can select or open an item just direct your cursor or pointer on your screen to what you want to select or open. Then tap your 
or put pressure on the trackpad and you have selected or opened those items to your screen. The next one is a two finger tap. This one is a shortcut um, to your menu. So if you're going on your Microsoft Word and you put um, your finger on the lower right hand side of your trackpad, then when you put a pressure onto that lower right hand side of the trackpad, it'll open up a window that gives you an option to copy cut and paste when you're working on your documents. And when you're on your main menu and you use your two finger to put pressure on the, again, lower right hand side of your trackpad, that it'll open up a, a window, but this time it'll be slightly different because it gives you different options. And one of those options that I'm familiar with is uh, the new folder. So if you want to get uh, organized, you pretty much uh, open up uh, your window with your two fingers on the lower right hand side and uh, choose a new folder and it'll give you a new folder so that you can go and start dragging um, documents that you want to put into specific uh, uh, categories so that uh, you can declutter your main menu and it looks nice and, and uh, clean and you still know where everything's at. Now the three finger tap is uh, by using your three fingers, uh, you can move vertically or horizontally and that'll open you up to going through your documents and websites or on your, or even your apps. So pretty much it's just a, a way that when you're uh, looking through your documents and you use your three fingers, that it'll go through your documents a lot faster. And if you're on the website uh, and you want to scroll, but it's too slow, so you just use your three fingers and, and it'll make you scroll a lot faster. And when you're on your apps and you want to breeze through it a lot quicker, then you just use your fing your three fingers and, and it'll uh, breeze through your apps. So that three finger is just to make sure that you sc scroll a lot faster through your documents, website, um, or apps. Now the two finger uh, pinch in or pinch out is basically a shortcut to zooming in and zooming out. So when you're um, just like how you work your, your uh, phone or your tablet, if you uh, uh, get your two fingers, your th uh, thumb and your pointer finger and it's closed and you spread them open, it'll make your picture go bigger. And if you uh, put pressure and your finger is uh, wide open and you're uh, pinching it in, it'll make it where your picture will then get smaller. So basically the same thing. Um, and then the next one is your three finger up and down. It's basically what it says, uh, sliding up to see all your, your open windows and then sliding down to show uh, your desktop. Now we are going to go over the top portion of your keyboard that is closer to your screen of your laptop that says F1 through F12. Those are the keys that are placed there to give you a quick access to your settings that you would end up using regularly. Like your volume control that you would use to control your speakers to lower the volume of your speakers or to increase the volume of your speakers. We will be going over that right now. I will also add on that there are pictures included on these keys to give you an idea to what they control. For example, F1 through F3 all have pictures of speakers, giving you a hint that these are your volume control. F1 has a slash line on it that tells you that this is your mute key. The volume will go mute when you press it once. When you press it again, the volume will return to the last volume setting you had left it on. F2 has a minus symbol in front of it. This means that the volume of the speaker 
will go low until you are unable to hear anything from it. F3 has a plus symbol in front of the speaker, which tells you that the volume will go as loud as it can with as many times as you press the key to have the volume increase. F4 controls the microphone on your laptop. When you press it once, you will disable or turn off the microphone from working. When you press it again, you will turn it back on. F5 and F6 control your brightness of your screen. F5 has a minus symbol in front of the picture of the sun. When you press this key, you will lower the brightness of the screen and can make the screen completely black. Heads up. Make sure that when you make the screen black to return it back to brighter to prevent from thinking your laptop is broken because you can't see anything on your screen and then realize it's just a setting that needed to be returned. F6 is to make your screen brighter and clearer to see. When you use the brightness to its fullest, you are also using a lot of your laptop's power if you are not charging your laptop when working on it. It is best to have the brightness at moderate to help not wear out your batteries. F7 manages your external display. So when you attach a cord adapter to your laptop to have the screen projected through another screen or projector, this key will help give you options to help project what you have on your laptop to those screens. F8 controls your built-in wireless to turn it on or off when you press this button. F9 opens your window settings. F10 controls your Bluetooth to turning it on or turning it off when you press this button. F11 opens the keyboard settings and F12 allows you to create or assign a fast connection through that key. Just a reminder that your laptop is a touchscreen laptop and that you need to make sure that you keep that part of your computer nice and, and clean because uh, if it's dirty, the touchscreen might not work as well as if it were to be uh, nice and clean. So make sure that when you're uh, uh, working with your laptop that, that there is no um, dirt or dust that blocks uh, the connection from uh, your fingers to your touchscreen computer. Now, how to take care of your laptop. So this is the most important thing that, that we need to uh, make sure that we're aware of uh, for ourselves as teachers. And uh, also when we are keeping an eye on students and how um, they are with their own assigned laptop. Now, sanitizing our laptops, especially during this COVID uh, situation we're in, we need to make sure that uh, we take care of our laptops and to also make sure that we don't spread anything to other people, right? So a suggestion or recommendation um, is that you use a microfiber towel or cloth and alcohol. Do not use water. Uh, we want to make sure that any kind of liquid cleaner that we use um, will dry up as uh, fast as possible. Um, so recommended for sanitizing is alcohol. Now, um, how much alcohol, you might be wondering. Um, just enough for, for the um, towel to be nice and moist. And when you uh, wipe it on a flat surface, that it automatically, as soon as you wipe it one swipe, that the alcohol will immediately evaporate uh, as you wipe it off. Um, now, if you end up having it where you wipe and then it takes some time for the alcohol to evaporate, then that's too much alcohol. 
You just need enough for the alcohol to, to get nicely onto the surface and to immediately evaporate uh, once uh, you swipe over your, your laptop. So when you're wiping your laptop, focus more on the area of uh, your where you touch the most, right? So um, like for instance, the, the top part of your keyboard and your um, mouse, make sure that you wipe the whole thing. Don't be pushing uh, too hard onto the, the key. You just wanna make sure that it gets uh, that, that alcohol moisture on it without having to have any part of the towel get stuck through those little cracks, right? So make sure you just uh, wipe just along the surface of your laptop. And also the, the screen needs to be wiped down. And um, how do you do the sides? You just wipe along the sides. Don't be sticking your, your towel or any kind of cotton or a piece of, of uh, cloth into those little uh, ports because it might end up getting stuck or breaking something, you know, or um, by having the liquid uh, go to it. So just, just a moisture uh, uh, dry, uh, not dry, but more or less having the, the alcohol dry immediately um, as soon as you, you wipe on the sides of where the ports are. And don't forget also that the outside um, part of your laptop needs to be uh, wiped down as well. But more or less, you just really need to focus on the areas that um, you or the students uh, end up touching the most because that's where uh, we want to make sure it's it's nice and, and sanitized. And a reminder that uh, when using the, the laptops that your students as well as yourself have it where your hands are clean, um, doesn't have any like uh, uh, dirt on it because we don't want to end up having uh, those things go onto the keys and then uh, slip into those little keyholes, right? So make sure that when you're using the laptop and your students are using the laptop, that their hands are also nice and clean, um, not just only sanitized, right? Now here are examples of uh, placements of your laptop, what to do, what not to do. Um, it's recommended that you have your laptop at all times right there in the center of your desk to ensure that uh, at any point it still has a safe place to, to move on to rather than if it were in any of the corners or close to the corners you know or sticking out of your desk that um, you're just asking for for an accident to happen and that's what we're trying not to do is we're trying to prevent any accidents from happening so to keep it safe um, please have your laptops right there in the middle of your desk when, when using your laptops. Now handling your laptops. It's recommended that you hold your laptops on either side securely in front of you with your elbows close to your sides uh, when you're moving it short distance. Um, it's recommended not to have your laptops open when you're transporting it longer distance, because uh, like I said, if there's any accidents, uh, it's safer if it's closed and it's open, um, less, less damages also uh, if it's closed and it's open. Um, but number one thing, number one rule that, that you don't do is hold it with one hand on either the, just the screen or just the base of the laptop because that is really, really uh, uh, dangerous to, to do, especially when it's not really secured when you're just holding it with one hand, right? So make sure that you're holding it with both hands and, and not with uh, one hand uh, when you're moving it from one place to another. Another preferred or recommended way of handling your laptop is by having your laptop closed and hold it securely by your side for the older kids or having the younger kids wrap their arms around the laptop in a tight hug when carrying it from their seat to returning them to the cart. 
Now, how to handle your power cord. There are three examples of what to do and what not to do for your power cord. It is recommended that uh, you have your cords neatly wrapped. Don't force the wires to go on a different direction. Uh, that could cause the wires inside the plastic uh, lining of your cord to loosen and break after many uses. So make sure that, that you keep that nice uh, fold that it has in order for it to not have any issues of the wirings inside break and get damaged. Now let's learn something about our power cord. The power cord has its own power box to protect from power fluctuations, but it's recommended that you connect it to a surge protector to help your laptop power box work less and to prevent it from wearing out early. Now when returning the laptops back to their carts, it's recommended when working with younger students that you will take um, the computer or the laptop with both hands, one on the top and one on the bottom, and carrying it over to the cart and pushing it into the slots that these laptops are assigned to be in. And then push, uh, put, making sure that when you're putting it into the cart that you still have both hands on your laptop and pushing it in. Once it's nice and, and majority of the laptop is in, then you can slowly use one hand and, and push it to, to where it needs to be for, for the charging to begin. Now, another recommendation is that make sure that the power button is facing outside and not inside because when you're charging, uh, it's a lot easier and it's also uh, convenient for uh, when you're connecting the laptops to uh, their outlets, that when you do that, you can actually see whether or not your laptops are charging or are already fully charged. So again, make sure that uh, your laptop, when you're sliding it in and securing it, that the power button is facing out so that you have uh, the convenience of when you're, you're charging it that uh, there's an easy way to, to just like get the cord, put it in, and then look and see whether or not the outlet is working or if your computer is charging or not charging or fully charged, right? Okay, now we're done with learning about our laptops, how to sanitize, how to take care of them, and how to return them back into our assigned laptop carts. We are now going to learn about our laptop carts. Okay, first thing that we need to know about our carts is that it comes with keys. Two keys, in fact. One, I would assume, would be uh, a copy for the office, and the other one is for the teacher that it is assigned to be uh, used for. Now these keys, you need to make sure that you keep it in a secure location because uh, once you lose it and someone has it, they have full access to the, the carts or for another case is that you're going to have a hard time uh, trying to open a, a cart that is locked and doesn't have a key, right? So make sure that you keep your keys secured um, and that we don't want anybody else that it doesn't belong to. Um, or assigned to to have it at hand. Now these are the recommendations prior to assigning the laptops. Um, it might already have been done, um, but these are some examples of what you can do in order to have the cards nice and organized uh, and to make sure that everybody is held accountable for if anything were to happen, then you know who had it last um, and uh, end up having it where, you know, you're guessing what happened to it. Now, the first thing that, that we need to know is that after receiving the laptop cards with the laptop, if, you, um, if they haven't been numbered yet, to number each slot 
and to match each slot with the same number for the laptops that will be always placed there. So example, slot one would have a laptop one. Or another example, these are the label, labelings, right? So slot one would have, uh, for instance, uh, CAM1, RM1 for room one, right? My, my first three letters of my name, CAM1 um, to room one. Or another way that you can also uh, label it would be for the slot one, right? Would be uh, kinder, would be the grade, and then room one. So whatever ways that makes it easier to identify where the laptops uh, belong to and what cart it goes to, um, just as long as uh, you know how it's, I guess, labeled, you're fine. Now create also a name to the cart the laptop is assigned to. For example, uh, purple crayon, the letters for the laptop will be in purple, right? Now assign the same students to the same laptop so that uh, it'll help keep track of uh, which student touched the laptop last if there is any problem with the laptop. Now if your laptop cart hasn't yet received their laptops, then these are things that, that you're going to be having to do when you do receive your carts and then later on receive the laptops. You're going to need to know that uh, on the back of the carts, um, there are areas of where you will have your cords placed. Um, Try to keep it nice and, and neat and not tangled um, so that it's easier also to clean it afterwards from the dust that might or the dirt that might also seep through the little holes and cracks and stuff like that of the cart. Um, also, I forgot to add on that the, there's a lock on the front part of the cart as well as in the back of the cart. Now, on the front of the cart, um, would have the exact same key to open and close as the back part of the cart would open and close. So one key for every cart will be able to open and close either side of the cart. Okay, going back to the cords, make sure that uh, each slot of where the cords are should be in the same area of on the opposite side where um, the cord to connect to the computer is at. It, it, it's easier that way, it's convenient, and, and you're not gonna have to worry about tangles or anything like that once you set it up that way. Now the cord for the outlet of the cart is located just below um, the handle for where you're going to hold and push the cart around. Well. If you look down, there's a, an area over there that your cord is connected to. Uh, make sure that that is uh, securely um, inserted into the cart. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the cord is just uh, hanging in, inside that box, but it's not connected. So make sure that uh, you open that up and check if your uh, end of the connection or the, the outlet is connected as well as uh, making sure that the outlet for the wall is also connected to the wall. So sometimes, you know, you have a situation where the outlet is not connected to the wall and you're wondering why your computer is not working or else sometimes it's connected to the wall and you're wondering, hey, why isn't it still not working? Uh, you want to check, again, you want to check if uh, the outlet to the cart is connected as well. Okay, and that is located um, right by the, the handle area of your cart on the bottom part. Now, 
turning on your laptop cart. There is also a switch uh, for you to be able to turn on and off your laptop carts. Um, if there's no light, uh, that means that your laptop cart is off. But if you press it, um, you should see a blue light there, as you can see in the picture, uh, showing that your cart is uh, working and is able to charge your laptops. Now, the laptop carts do have vents and it's located below the handle of the cart when pushing it around. Make sure that the area of the vent is not blocked to keep the cart cool. Now, these carts do have asset numbers also, and that is uh, the number that all uh, the computers should also be uh, connected to. So all those laptops that are in the carts, instead of having it all in one teacher's name, they're all assigned to that one cart. And the cart is then assigned to the individual. So that is located right by the handle of the cart and it should also be red with silver and bars on it. Your laptop carts do have locks in them to prevent the carts from moving around while you are taking out your laptops or putting in your laptops. So once you found a location to where you want your laptop carts um, set in, lock both sides of your laptop all four wheels do have locks in them and how do you lock it you press down on the knobs as you can see on the picture that um, those are knobs uh, that you can either press down to lock or uh, push up to unlock with your hand or foot now, how do you sanitize uh, your carts? Same thing, just like the laptops, you, uh, it's recommended that you use a microfiber towel and that um, you use alcohol, not water, not any other cleaning uh, liquid, but alcohol. Don't make it too wet, make it uh, moist enough that uh, when you uh, find a flat surface and you wipe through, that the alcohol will immediately evaporate as you wipe through it. So um, just wipe through the top, the sides, um, areas that, that are always being touched, you wipe that and, and whatever else you feel that, that needs to be cleaned to, to take that microfiber towel and to wipe along there. Um, also, another recommendation is that every once in a while, uh, if it does get a little bit dusty, that you can use a vacuum to uh, suction all the, the dust as well as in the air vents of your cart so that we can keep that fan from uh, being clogged up to make sure that every once in a while, you know, to, to vacuum the, the dust and the dirt and the lint that goes into those areas of your carts. And don't forget also to, to take care of the areas that your um, charger uh, cords are at as well. Things that, that collect us when, when we least expect it or, you know, are unconsciously uh, forgetting that that area also needs cleaning. Now, securing your laptop carts. It's recommended that you put your laptop carts in a room that is uh, with the least amount of moisture and is also in cool temperature. So here's an example of uh, what kind of room that if you're staying and standing or sitting in a room, that after a while, uh, if you're sweating, then that's not the room that you wanna put your cart in. But if you're in the room and you're not doing anything and you're just staying there and you're not sweating, then that would be an okay room to keep your laptop or your laptop carts in. Uh, now, laptop carts can be charged overnight if the laptop, um, if you're going to have your laptops uh, used uh, the next day. So Monday through Friday, uh, you can have your laptop cards charging overnight. 
but when Friday hits, um, it's recommended that you unplug your carts and not have it charging during the weekend because any kind of situation where there's a power fluctuation, where you're going to be forced to come back, we don't want you to worry about your carts during the weekend and have any issues with the carts also when Monday comes. Okay, so make sure that on Friday your uh, laptops and laptop carts are not charging overnight. Now, if there's any technical uh, difficulties that you might have problems, um, go directly to your help desk website at uh, the website that uh, I have written there, which is helpdesk.gdoe.net. Um, then you will sign under your username, and then you will fill out uh, different fields or information, uh, which is your name of the school, your name, your contact number, asset number of the laptop, uh, grade, and the technical problem or the issues with the laptop that you might have. Then press enter to submit. Now, technicians will email that uh, they received it and give you a ticket and we'll be updating you uh, through your email or phone number that you've inputted onto your ticket. So make sure that uh, whatever information that you have, that uh, you type that out and give it to them so that they know exactly what it is the problem uh, that you have problems with on your laptops or to give them your phone number so that they can immediately call you and then they can uh, work with you to see how or what is the problem and for you also to be updated on what's going on with your laptop. Any further questions left after the presentation, please email me at ypgcamacho at gdoe.net or joann.chargaloff at gdoe.net. I hope the information that I've shared with you is helpful and informative and that you are now comfortable and ready to take care of and know about your laptop and laptop carts. Thank you again and be safe and stay safe. Goodbye.